Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. In today's episode, I want to introduce you to mass transit. Mass transit has a bunch of different uses, but communicating between different pieces of code is primarily what I'm going to show you today. Over the next few videos, I'll explore some additional features that mass transit can do for you and how it will help you create multi-tier applications, whether they be microservices, modular monoliths, or simple container apps. Let's get started. So I want to give you a short introduction to this before project. I haven't added mass transit to this whatsoever, but I have it as a multi-tier application. You'll see that I'm using a host project, and that is actually just an Aspire project, though this doesn't require Aspire at all. So if you're doing any sort of multi-tier application, this can really help. You can even do this in process as well, but that's not what I'm going to be showing you. I have an API, and I also have a project that just does order processing. In a real world scenario, I may also have a payment processor and a shipping processor, et cetera, that will do different parts of the operation, but we're gonna make it nice and simple. So I'm gonna run this project. And in our case, I'm waiting for a couple of things. I first have an order queue, and that's just running RabbitMQ. Regardless of how you're going to communicate between the tiers, Mass Transit can really do that for you. I happen to be using a more simple version using RabbitMQ, but this could be Azure queues, this could be AWS queues, this could be the database as well. I'm just doing it in a queue because I really want this application to run in a pretty seamless way. And so if we look at this project and then open up the store, we'll see that the store is just a simple e-commerce project. When I go to checkout, I'm going to want to support processing this order asynchronously. So I don't want to have to do checking the payment information. I don't want to do the shipping. I don't want to do the receipts or any of that stuff immediately. I just want to get the order, go ahead and throw it in the queue so that we can start a background process. So hopefully they'll decide they want more shoes because we got together really quickly. What you'll notice here is I have a, something called the order queue, which is just a Rabbit MQ set of queues that we're using to do the communication between the tiers. This could be any sort of queue in Azure or AWS or something custom that you built, or even a database. This does not have to be the specific technology, but it's a way that we can have different tiers talk to each other. If I open up that store, and let's say I process an order, it's going to process it. Don't worry about this being two is for testing. I always like to have a cart that there. It has submitted that order and then another process is going to grab that. And let's see what that looks like. So if we open up the API, it's actually an API for the orders itself. And when we create that order, which is what we're posting from the front end, we're actually serializing the model itself, that data. We're creating a channel, and that's a channel that will go to the RabbitMQ. We're declaring a queue in case it wasn't created, encoding it, and then we're publishing it with a specified queue name that we're going to need with the actual JSON of the body. And the idea here is that we're just going to publish it out, and then in our order processing, project. We have code in here that opens up the queues. You'll see an error in an order queue. Sets up an event here, process queue, if anything comes in on that queue to this other process. And then all I do here is I get the data, do some magic stuff, and then insert it into the database. I could also send another message saying it's been complete or ready for payment or whatever I want to do. And this is a lot of boilerplate to get that working. You have to understand a lot about how RabbitMQ works. And what we'd like is to be able to do this without having to understand or need to know about how the underlying data store, the bus, the queue, the database actually do this. So let's use mass transit to simplify this. So we're going to start in the API by adding a new NuGet package called mass transit. And you'll see that it has a main mass transit, but we're actually going to use based on which of the technologies we're going to use. You can see down here, you could sort in any framework core, Amazon SQX, Autofac, etc. There's a ton of these for different kinds of technologies, Azure Storage, MongoDB, etc. But I'm going to use RabbitMQ here. And we could install this, but there's actually a little incompatibility. We're actually using RabbitMQ Client 681. 
because this is the one that comes with the Aspire RabbitMQ. I could upgrade it, but I'm not gonna upgrade it. And the best way I'm gonna do this is actually use an older version of the RabbitMQ version. And so I'm actually just gonna downgrade this to 830. Once I update Aspire, I could also update this to the latest version. But this is pretty stable and I'm not too concerned with an older version. Now that I have Mass Transit installed, I'm actually going to create in this common project that both of them share, I'm going to create a new file called Contracts. Because ultimately, we're going to need a contract that defines what a message looks like. And for us, that message is just going to be a .NET class. We don't have to think about what is involved in there. In fact, we can make them nice and easy. And let's make this a public record. And I will call this one order created. And this will actually just take one of my order objects, which for me is just the entity. This could be the DTO as well. And because it's a record, I'm just going to capitalize it just to make it a little simpler in the way we need to do this. And I'll create another one for order submitted. And I could create a number of these for the different stages, order submitted, order ready for payment, order ready for shipping, etc. But these are just simply messages that are going to be communicated between both sides. Now I put it in this common because both my API and my order processing use the same library. That way they can both get to it. Now in our API itself, I'm just going to make a small change here. When we do create order, instead of us having to know about any of the RabbitMQ stuff, in fact, I'm just going to change this from a connection to what Mass Transit calls a bus. I'm going to go ahead and say using Mass Transit there, and I'll just call this the bus. We're going to inject it into our project. And what are we going to do here? We're going to say bus.publish new order created with our model in here. Now, all we're doing is we're letting Mass Transit handle the serialization, how it gets into a queue and all of that. And so instead of us having to think about any of this stuff, we're actually going to be just using a publish subscribe sort of system with Mass Transit to communicate across tiers. But before we do that, we actually have to come in here and register it with our APIs. So I'm going to come down here in my program.cs and say builder.services.addMassTransit. And here's where we will need to know a little bit about the database. So we first need to get a connection string. And unsurprising, we're just going to use configuration for this. And we're going to call this order queue. Now, where does this order queue come from? Because I'm using Aspire, when I set up my host and created the order queue, I told it for my API project to include that queue. And so this name order queue is going to be added as a connection string in my other project. So that way I don't have to know what the real connection string is. It's going to handle it for me. Now that I have the connection string, I'm just going to tell it that I want to use RabbitMQ. This is going to take a little configuration object. I'm going to do two things with this. I'm going to give it a context and then a rab. The context is how you configure RabbitMQ for Mass Transit, and the rab is the RabbitMQ instance that we're going to need to use. So first I'm going to say rab host is a new URI with that connection string. I'll go ahead and put that because I'm going to trust that it's always going to be there. And on the wrap, I want to configure endpoints, and I just pass it that context to create those endpoints. Now, this does a couple of things. It not only sets up communication with the RabbitMQ server, but also makes sure things are created like the queues themselves. And so if I've done this right, let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to do the same process again. That process is actually put into the order queue, that order I created, just sitting there in its own queue. And now that everything is up and running, we can actually, let's come back here to our project. I'm going to stop it. Let's go down to the order processing. This has all that information about processing it and all that. And what we're going to do actually, get rid of that, and we're not even going to have the worker processing. What we're going to do here instead is pretty much exactly what we did here. We could actually move this to something that is shared to do the same sort of thing. Of course, we need to add our mass transit here. So all that is the same version. Come back here. Let's bring that namespace in. We're going to do the same thing. That order queue is going to be passed to us as well. But we need to do one additional thing here, and that is tell it that we want to listen for it. So how do we do that? We can actually take this and say add consumers. Now, what are consumers? Consumers are a class you're going to create that un 
surprisingly will consume messages of a certain type. And so we're actually just going to tell it to say assembly, okay, executing assembly, so that it'll search through our whole project for all the consumers we might create. I'm only going to create one here, but this makes it a little simpler. So that means we need in this project a new order consumer. And the consumer requires a generic parameter. Can you guess what it is? Order created, which is that type of our contract. Let's go ahead and implement that interface. And here we can see it's a really simple case. Consume, and then it gives you this context object that contains a message that is that order created. So first we're going to need a couple of parameters here. We're first going to need a I service provider and I logger for our order consumer. So the first thing we're going to do to use this is actually say using var scope provider create scope. This is just going to allow us to create scope services. And I'm going to say db context equals scope dot service provider dot get required service. I'm going to ask for a shoe context. Now in a real project, you wouldn't use the context directly, but we're just creating a demo. So I want to say db context.add our context.message. Now this message itself is that contract, the order created contract. And we have a property on that called order, which is the actual DTO, the actual data sent from the website that contains the order. Remember, this hasn't been stored anywhere but the queue at this point. It's not been put in a database. So I'm going to say if db context save changes async is greater than zero, so it did actually save anything, so it affected at least one row, then I can go ahead and use the logger log information saved new order. And that'd be great. We can see that happen, but we also might want to actually move it to the next step. And so we can use that context has a publish just like the bus did. In publish, we're just going to create a new order submitted. And so this is going to be our new state. And let's go ahead and now add the context.message.order. And of course, we need to await that as well. So the idea here is that it's going to process this. It's going to put it into the database and then send the message on that the order submitted is there. And we can go ahead and move to maybe some other process in or out of process. And then we can hand it off to another consumer in or out of process to do something else without, without us having to handle it. So mass transit is creating a way for us to send messages and receive messages without having to connect those two. This order processing project knows nothing of the API project. It only knows that it's going to be running. And so let's see if we can get this running. And so we go ahead and process this. And we look at the order processing. Let's look at that log. Save new order. So because of the way this works, we can see that it actually did save that new order that we processed from one to the other. Let's go ahead and grab the generated password. I'm just going to copy that. Let's go over to the queue. Now we can actually see that there is an order queue and that there's nothing in it right now. But if we're quick, and we're probably not going to be quick enough. Yeah, it was just too fast for us. Let's see if there's any history here. So we can see a peak here of when the messages came in. And of course, it was pulled out of that queue. If we had a listener for the submitted, we could see that in here as well. So there's a little bit of setup as we've seen here, but not really that dramatic. What I find interesting about this is that this can be the basis of really a messaging structure across different tiers. Again, whether you're using Aspire or Kubernetes, or you have a bunch of machines in a data center, we all end up with the same thing and having a way to communicate with them in a synchronous way and recoverable way. One of the things I haven't shown you is if you had thrown an error, if an exception had happened inside one of those handlers or when you tried to publish, it would actually sent that automatically to an error queue named after what the queue was. So it'd be an order queue with an order underscore error queue. And so that you could actually see when these weren't being processed correctly. Later, we'll talk about how to monitor those and how to deal with those in a future video. Hope this has encouraged you to take a look at Mass Effect and not think it's too big. The documentation isn't the best, I'll tell you right now, but the people who are building it are doing a great job. It's a really fundamentally great system. And I really do encourage you to look at it if you have these sorts of problems. Thanks for joining me for another coding short. My name is Sean Wildermuth. I'll see you next time.